Hi everybody, this is Mark Newman, founder of Precision Analytical, the makers of the Dutch test. I wanted to take a minute and explain to our providers why we've made one important change that a lot of you have had questions about on our new report, and that is the retiring of the pie chart. I want to explain the science that led us to this. We put that on our test initially to be a really convenient, and it is convenient way to compare in a three-way comparison phase one metabolism, the 2-hydroxy, the 4-hydroxy, and the 16-hydroxy. Recently, as you've noted, we've added the sliders that you see on the left. So now we're telling this story in two different ways in terms of the comparison between these three metabolites. But we've made one additional step here and removed and retired the pie chart. And some of you have asked why, and I want to show you the science of that. If you note this case on the left, the 16-hydroxy is really predominating, meaning that blue piece of the pie is really big. This case on the right, it's really small. And when the 16 gets really extreme, either large or small, it obscures our ability to tell the difference between the 2-hydroxy and the 4-hydroxy. Let me show you the science of this. The 2-hydroxy and the 16-hydroxy are essentially competing for each other in an issue that has to do with the estrogenicity of these metabolites. 16-hydroxy is estrogenic, but the 4-hydroxy is not very estrogenic, but it can be genotoxic, meaning it's actually doing DNA damage, and the 2-hydroxy is competing with it in a protective way. So the 4-hydroxy you can see on the left, it creates this reactive quinone, and then it breaks a piece of DNA off. So you see that little red piece of the DNA, which becomes attached to the 4-hydroxy, and that is its genotoxic potential, the 2-hydroxy helps protect against that. That's important. The 16-hydroxy is working at the receptor level. So ER, meaning estrogen receptor. The most potent estrogen, as we know, is estradiol. But it competes with 16-hydroxy, which also can attach to the estrogen receptor, and the 2-hydroxy has some anti-estrogenic properties again, at the receptor level. So what's going on here with estrogen attaching to the receptor is an issue where the 2-hydroxy and the 16-hydroxy are competing in a sense that is a different issue for how estrogenic the patient is, and that is a separate issue from the genotoxic potential of the 4-hydroxy. I put a Nice little abstract here. If you want to read that, you can pause the video and learn a little bit more about what's going on at the receptor level. But the point is, these are two different issues that we need to separate in two different sliders. And let me show you a really good example of when we can miss something really important if we're using the pie chart. This patient has levels of 2-hydroxy, 4-hydroxy, and 16-hydroxy that are all above the postmenopausal range. So there is substantive estrogen in this patient for each of these metabolites. Now, as we look at the pie chart, it tells us one story very accurately, and that is that the 16-hydroxy is predominating over the other metabolites. That is an estrogenic issue, and you can see on the slider that it's at the third percentile meaning the 2 to 16 ratio is only higher than 3% of the population. That's an extreme preference towards the more estrogenic 16-hydroxy E1. But when you look at the percentage of the 4-hydroxy, it's a little sliver of pi on this pie chart. In fact, it's way below the normal range. Now, if you think through that intuitively, what you would think to yourself potentially is that there isn't very much of the 4, but the 4-hydroxy is not really competing with the 16-hydroxy at the estrogen receptor level. It is competing in its genotoxic potential with the 2-hydroxy. And so we can see that the relationship between the 2 and the 4 is completely obscured. The pie chart tells you, wow, there's not very much 4-hydroxy here, nothing to see here. Whereas when you compare just the 2 to the 4 with this genotoxic potential, you can see that that ratio is only higher than 6% of the population. With these sliders, we usually want to be in that green space of 20th to 80th percentile. So what we're listing here is a population percentile that tells you you're higher than this percentage of the population. In this case, if only 6% of the population prefers the 4 more than the 2 for this patient, that tells us that the pie chart is really misleading in cases like this. Now, most cases are not like this, but it is too prevalent for us to report it as 
the pie chart and not the sliders. And that's why we are moving in this direction. The other reason that's really important is as you look in the literature and you ask questions about estrogen metabolism, you might notice we just published some information and data as it relates to estrogen therapy and the use of things that impact estrogen metabolism. And we're able to do that only when we report the two-way ratios of two to 16 and two to four. And we're able to see that move with the use of things like DIM and indole 3 carbonyl really interesting publication. But as we pursue publications and follow the peer-reviewed literature, that data is all presented as two-way ratios and not a three-way ratio. So that's why it was really important for us to keep evolving, to follow the science, and to make sure cases like this don't leave you as a provider in a position where you might miss a really important finding that this patient might need intervention to really help protect against the genotoxic potential of the 4-hydroxy-E1. So you'll notice that the pie chart is no longer there. You'll also notice that this page is now page two. So as you look at phase one and methylation on page one with that summary page, you'll see that the very next page, you're able to tell this estrogen metabolism story again with the sliders and not the pie chart. And then the table page, page three, then follows and you can see the 216 and the 24 ratio listed here. If you have additional questions on these elements or other elements of the new Dutch report, please do contact our staff or see our other educational resources. And we look forward to continuing to help you pursue hormone wellness with your patients.